Hey everybody, welcome back to the final day of the 14 day artist journey. It has been, oh my goodness, such a wild ride. As you guys know, there have been days where we've had to wing it, which is exactly what the photo artist journey is. And we've had so many incredible guests on with us. And I hope that you guys have gotten the type of value out of it that I have. Like I have learned so much about myself and even though I practice the things that we're, that we're doing as we're going through the photo artist journey, I think being this immersed in it through this period of time has been absolutely incredible. Um, I've learned a lot about myself. I have a new vision now for the direction that I'm personally going to be going in. So for those of you who might be joining us on the last day, welcome. I'm glad that you're here. Um, the rest of you that have been with us, I'm real glad that you're here today because we have an amazing guest with us that I'm really excited about. And I'm going to introduce her in just one second. But quickly, I want to walk through um, the process of the 14-day photo artist journey with you again. So if you haven't done this yet, it's really important that you go to the 14-day photo artist journey. Everyone who signs up, ProPrints is being amazing, and they are giving away a 20 by 30 canvas wrap print to every single one of you who sign up. Today is the last day that you can do it. So if you haven't done it, go get it so you can get your 20 by 30 print. Um, we have a bunch of other wonderful um vendors who are supporting us and you guys are getting emails about those things and you can also download the book that I wrote the 14 day photo artist journey um, which is the uh, journal that is accompanying this process and it's something that you can use over and over again because the things that we've done during this 14 day journey unfortunately are not one and done so let's talk about those really quickly get them out of the way and then get on to our amazing guests I'm so excited I want to get into it so the first thing that we're doing during this journey is self-awareness right and that's the part where we take stock of all of the things that we do really well um, the places where we flourish the places where we're really good and we're going to give ourselves like props for that kind of stuff we're going to hold on to those things and cherish them because they're important we're going to keep them you know in high regard because we're going to need them at other times. And those other times are when we're being self-reflective and we're looking at the things where maybe there are, are holes in our skill sets that we need to improve upon and or obstacles, whether they be um, perceived obstacles or real obstacles. And we really do have, this part has to come first because once again, nothing changes on the outside unless we're able to change on the inside. So if we're not aware of all of the things that we're great and magnificent at, and we don't lean into those, and the places where we need to grow or the obstacles and challenges that we face that we have to get past, then we can't move forward. So phase one, self-awareness. Phase number two is redefining vulnerability and not looking at it as something negative, but something positive. Because when we're vulnerable and we're open, that's when all of the beauty and the good things in the world can happen. <clears throat> Without being vulnerable, without leaning in, we really can't go anywhere. So that's another one that we have to do. So we make an agreement with ourselves to be vulnerable. That's going to be part of your photo submission, right? It's also just part of your journey as an artist. And then phase three is bravery. And you guys have heard me say it a million times at this point. Bravery is not going out there and doing things in the absence of fear or discomfort um, or uncertainty. Bravery is going out there and doing things in the presence of all of that and knowing that you're going to be okay. Um, failure, mistakes, those things are verbs. They are not nouns. They do not define who you are. They're just part of our journey and they're necessary parts of our journey. Um, we should be running towards failures because those are the places that we actually learn. So this is not a one and done. You don't get to do this one time and then it stops, right? This is a continuum. These three things we do on a regular basis. Um, me, pretty much every day. And the more we do it, the more we kind of wire our brains to be okay with it. And it helps us along in our journey. So we're building our foundation. This is our starting place, right? And once we get there, then we get to start really understanding and creating our vision for the work that we want to create, the business we want to build, the life we want to experience, it just goes on and on, right? And oftentimes, as you're going through this journey, and you have that foundation, you keep building upon that foundation. If you keep working those first three steps, 
many times your vision is going to change and that's okay. That's called evolution. And that's a beautiful thing. That's another thing we want to lean into. So that's what we're doing today starts your photo submissions. So you're going to want to lean into those things. And if you haven't done them, go ahead and get them done. Um, and you're going to start working on your project because let's see, we are me and my notes. Cause I can't remember anything. You guys know that. Um, we're accepting submissions between the 23rd and the 27th. We're going to be judging those submissions between the 30th and May 4th. And then we're going to be announcing our winners on May 5th. Um, lots of giveaways, lots of great stuff. And remember, this is open to portrait photographers from all genres. So long as it's a portrait photograph, it's fine. It can be something that you've created in the past where you kind of stepped outside of your comfort zone or it could be something that you're creating during this photo artist journey. Either is fine. Um, I kind of like the idea of you creating it after going through the journey, but if you have something where you feel like you've worked these steps and you've done that and you want to submit the photo, then by all means do it. There's several categories. Um, they're all on the website, the 14 day photo artist journey. You can find it all over there. And now I'm done. I am done with the spiel because I really want to get into this interview. So I would like to introduce my amazing guest, Ms. Jacqueline Tobin. Um, she is an industry expert. She is an amazing writer and she is a renowned editor as well. Uh, Jacqueline, you've had such a prolific and amazing career within the industry. I'm so excited to have you on right now. Um, and to be honest with you, you were kind of the birthplace of where this idea started for me. So thank you for inspiring me personally to do this. I appreciate you and all the work you've done in our industry, um, all the years that you have. Um, I would love for you to introduce yourself and then I want to talk a little bit more about how you inspired me, but let's start by, I don't know if there's anyone watching this who doesn't know who you are, but just in case, just in case, let's have you introduce yourself to the audience. Well, thank you for that lovely introduction. And as you said, I'm Jacqueline Tobin. Um, I have been in the photo industry for 37 years. Yikes, but, uh, it's been a great pleasure um, you know, I just recently came off of working at, as the editor-in-chief of Range Finder magazine for the last 12 years. Um, before that, I was at Photo District News. I don't know how many people remember that magazine. It was a great, we called it the Bible of photography. It was a great publication. Um, you know, and that job I got right out of college. So I was 23 when I started there. And so, you know, I have been around for a long time. And I, I just love this industry and the people in it so much. Uh, the industry loves you too. We, we <laughs> love you back. Uh, so I recently went and spoke at AIBP, um, their first retreat under their new ownership of Sean and Michelle Black. And Jacqueline was also one of the guest speakers there. And I have always been, Jacqueline, I have always been terrified to submit my work. Like the times that I've been published, it's because um, magazines have reached out to me asking me to shoot a cover or shoot an inside editorial or whatever it was they needed from me, right? And so, of course, if someone's reaching out to me, I'm not going to be rejected because they're reaching out to me, right? So I did that, but I have never myself personally submitted any of my work to a magazine for consideration for publication. It always felt like something that was just really unattainable and listening to you present, getting to know you and listening to you present at AIBP um, made me really start questioning, well, why, why am I afraid? What is this fear about? It's that self-awareness part, right? Like, so I had to go to that self-awareness part. What is this and why am I afraid of it? And if I'm afraid of it, how many other people are afraid, right? And the more I thought about it, the more I thought, wow, I need to demystify um, this process of submissions and, and, and the entire artist's journey. Because we're, like what I think, you know, the people who like are featured in Rangefinder, I think of my heroes within the industry, like Messina or Jose Villa or, you know, the giants, right? The gods of the industry. And 
And I realized like they weren't not always the gods. They had to go on a journey themselves. They weren't always brilliant. It took work and it took time and there was a journey for them as well. And who's to say that at some point I will not attain those skills or that level of beauty in my work. And it's always a journey. It's not about the destination. It's about the journey. And so as I was working to kind of like demystify it for myself, I was like, it would be really good if I was able to do this with other people. And then Jacqueline and I had some conversations about it. We were like, yeah, let's do this. So thank you so much because you really were the inspiration for this happening. Um, And you really kind of talked me through the beginnings of this, like those initial conversations that we had about it, they were the birthplace of this idea. So I am forever grateful. And I know that there are a lot of people that have been on this journey as well, who are also incredibly grateful um, that you helped me with this. Like I'm forever thankful. Thank you so very much. You're welcome, but thank you. And, you know, everything you're saying, I completely agree with. I think it's so important for photographers, especially emerging ones to know how, how it is more about the journey, you know, not as much about the destination as a journey and the path that you're taking and the learning and the growing. And one great thing, I think I shared this with you a while back, I had attended um, a presentation by Roberto Valenzuela years ago, somewhere in Florida. And he, I love that he did this. He showed all of his very, like the work that he did starting out Um, And people were like, I can't believe this is your work. It's kind of bad. Sorry. But that's why he was showing it because comparing where he was when he started out versus where he is now. And like, you know, people go to WPPI or imaging and other shows. They only see these like sort of rock star photographers who who are great now, but where they come from. And I think that was part of the impetus for you to sort of start this whole thing and talk about the journey because everybody started at round zero right so I think it's important for photographers to know that as well yeah I couldn't agree more I mean if we looked at my early work oh dear oh dear (laughs) I'm actually like through this um I was invited to go shoot at the pro prints uh legends of portrait photography and yeah you know I'm natural light shooter I pride myself on being a natural light shooter I pride myself on being a natural light shooter because I hate working with constant or strobe lights. I like it just, ugh, I don't like it. I don't like it because I don't know how to do it well, right? So when I went to that Pro Prints uh, competition, I went out in the desert with one camera body and one lens and that's it. And everybody else who showed up had like all the equipment, they've got all their portable lights, all this stuff. And I'm like, oh dear, like that's a lot to do, right? And as I'm shooting, I'm like, damn, it would be really good if I had some lights with me right now. (laughs) And so in that moment, I decided I am going to master artificial lighting. Like I want to, I'm brilliant with natural lighting. I want to master continuous light. I want to master using light for filling. And I want to master using artificial light just like in the absence of any natural light, just so I have those things in my skill set. And I'm going to document the entire process from me just being God awful at it, which I am right now, getting to the point where I can create something that's beautiful. So, yeah, I think it's really important that people understand, like, um, I've said this before during, during the last two weeks, but at the same time, um, and this is just in life in general, we are living and we are dying all at the same time, Right. And we make a choice. If we decide to be on the journey, we are choosing to live. And if we decide to be focused on the destination, we're just marching towards death. So it's incredibly important to just be present and be immersed in the journey as much as possible. Um, So you, my dear, have (laughs) a lot, a lot of work. You've seen a lot of photographers. You've seen more pictures, more photos than we can probably even count. I'm quite certain. (laughs) What is it in work that moves you? And I know there's probably a lot of things, Um, but I'm curious, what makes your heart like sing when you see beautiful work? What is it about this medium and this art form 
that that in in those images that really speak to you what is it about that work that that is beautiful to you I mean there there is an intangible element and so I always say in presentations this sounds very rudimentary but I want to feel a gut punch <laughs> like I definitely feel like my breath is taken away and I can't really put my finger on why immediately which I think is part of the allure of an image that you just are drawn into it without even like asking questions like why why do I like it why this why that but you know ultimately for me everything comes together the composition and the lighting and the storytelling and the you know actually I can see the photographer's intent in the image as well because I'm always seeking a signature voice like when I judge photographs or photographers who would enter the 30 Rising Stars competition, I would always want to see, well, what's their signature voice? So it could be mood, dark and moody or light and airy or, you know, very um, compositional and graphic. But whatever it is, it's more about like, I want to see that in the image and that they're being authentic, like with being their true self in their imagery. Because if they don't know who they are as an artist and a photographer, how can they then photograph and show that work and other people like understand it and be drawn in by it so I think that's like really important yeah. to find your voice um I think as portrait photographers I think sometimes that's hard to do for us because we're being commissioned by clients to um so as I shouldn't say as portrait artists I should say as um creative entrepreneurs that can oftentimes be difficult for us because we're being commissioned by clients and we have to be collaborative with them and right. in process. And there's an art in that in and of itself, right? But that signature voice that you're talking about, I also think is so incredibly important. I mean, I can spot a Lillian Bassman image from like 500 miles away. Right. For those of you who don't know who Lillian Bassman is, she was a brilliant, brilliant film photographer, um, film and fashion photographer of last century, and you should definitely go and look her up. But there are those certain photographers who, it doesn't matter what they shoot, you know it's their work. The same thing for me with like Ellen Von Unworth. I see Ellen, I, I know Ellen's work like that, like there's just... Stephen Mizell is another one who I just, I know his work. As soon as I see it, I know it's him. And they have very distinctive and clear voices, regardless of, you know, the subject matter that they're shooting, you know, it's them. And I was thinking about that earlier as we're going through this, this journey and trying to find our voices and those voices can evolve and change and, and they normally do. But I think once you kind of hit that real signature style, it kind of really stick it once you I think guess what's the once you get to the point where you become yourself right instead of trying to appease other people once you really become yourself that signature voice gets just stronger and stronger and it might ebb and flow and change a little bit but it gets really strong who are some of your favorite photographers who have those voices that are strong that and not necessarily within like you know this this particular world but just in the photography world in general that the audience might not know about but could go and learn a lot oh, from sure. and I, I actually I do have a few or I have a lot but I'll only mention a few but I just wanted to just mention like what you had just addressed about like if you have a signature voice but then you're hired for a commercial shoot or something and you know you're working collaboratively and might have to adhere to what the art director wants and, and not what you want to do but I think the important thing to keep in mind as the photographer is that you are hired for your signature voice it might it might sort of you know move a little away from that in the ultimate job that you're shooting but like that's why you're hired in the first place. I mean, you know, Jose Villa, who's a good friend of mine, and I just love his work. You know, he started getting, uh, doing a lot of people weddings, uh, shooting for People magazine. Like he did Nick Jonas and Priyanka and some other celebrity weddings. And when I would look at them, like I didn't see 
they weren't in his style as much as, you know, he's Jose Villa and that's who they wanted and they saw his work, but he was shooting for people and people has a very like regimented like style for their wedding shoots. So that's like a good example of he was hired for his look, but then he had to sort of format himself into their look. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's might be hard to um, rec you know, reckon that at some point, but I think it's an, an important difference to make. Um, like some of the photographers I've always loved. I love Arnold Newman. I don't know if anybody listening will know who that is. He was an, a great environmental portrait uh, portrait artist. Um, I love Elliot Erwitt. These are all these like older photographers that I interviewed during my PDN days. Um, I loved Ellen Von Unworth and um, people like Mary Ellen Mark and um, oh, Gordon Parks. Like, again, these are to me the legends. I always loved Bernice Abbott's work. Um, there's just so many that I can name. Um, and these days, like, I can't even think. There's so many people I love now, but um, like too many to to name here. But I do love like the people who came before and like laid the groundwork. Yeah. I mean, Arnold Newman is a brilliant, or he was, he's not alive anymore, but a brilliant portraitist and people should definitely check out his images. Yeah, I think that's important. I think that so often we're looking at our contemporaries and our peers and we're not looking at the people who came before us. Right. For me, one of those, so those are all, you guys go Google those, those artists and look them up if you want to be inspired outside of what is happening today and kind of see where the, you know, where the groundwork was laid down. Um, these are some artists that you should definitely be checking out. And I know we've been talking a lot about looking outside of the industry for inspiration, but in a way, this is looking outside of the industry. Right. If you're a family portrait photographer and you go look at Gordon Parks, like you're going to be looking at something very different. And it's good to look outside of your particular um, if you are niche down in one of the portrait genres, it's good to look outside of your genre at other artists. And so for me, one of those artists was actually Man Ray. Like he was a, <clears throat> he was part of the Dada movement um, and happened to pick up a camera and then kind of became the father of, of fashion photography prior to Man Ray and his work most of the fashion or most most things in I was going to say photography it's not photography most of the the content of the fashion magazines was illustration um which actually Lillian Bassman another photographer you guys need to go check out um went to school to be an illustrator so she could go work for one of the magazines as a fashion illustrator and ended up becoming a photographer so Yes, these are all like a wealth of beautiful inspiration that you guys should go and check out um, for certain. Now, so, okay, we know what you like in a photograph. You want something that moves you. And I think that's art in general, right? That's the purpose. It should be something that when the viewer sees it, they don't necessarily know why, what, or how, but it speaks to them. It, it moves them. And there's a lot of like mystery around how to create that type of imagery. And there are different ways to go about it. And I think you would agree with me, Jacqueline, that it's subjective, right? Different things are going to move different people. Um, but generally speaking, uh, if we're talking about portraiture, it's kind of the human condition. When you capture that and it is clearly depicted in, in the imagery, then the viewer is going to connect with it. Um, which is what we're all trying to do. We're all trying to create connections, right? That's that's life. That's the human condition. And it's one of the reasons we're creatives and we're artists. We want to build those beautiful things. So we've covered that part now. Now I want to talk about submissions and the fear of submissions and why it's important to, to actually do that. And you're the perfect person to talk to about that. So I'm going to let you take that part because that is your definitely your area of expertise. Well, thank you. But I think it's important to to figure out like why, like if you're submitting work to a specific publication, why that publication? Why do you think your work would fit? Is it just because you've always dreamt of like shooting for Vogue, but does your work really fit Vogue's aesthetic and look? Like you have to make sure you're 
applying to the right, like submitting your work to the right publication or the right blog, um, and that you're a good fit for it. If you submitting work to Martha Stewart Wedding, like, do you have a lot of detail shots, things like that, like get to know the publication beforehand. Otherwise, they won't even look at your work. I mean, at, at Rainfinder, I was very open to all sorts of different images and looks, um, you know, and I always looked for, I like in between moments, and I like sort of storytelling narratives and layers to images. So um, in portraiture, I think you can get all of that in there. It, it could be like a stark portrait with no background, or it can be a beautiful environmental portrait that really, like the viewer is being connected to his or her environment. And for me, that always like, I really respond more to those images because you see what's important to the person, to the subject. Um, and how that narrative is built. But so I think like that's the first step is making sure the publication you're submitting to is is right. Um, and, and just knowing, looking through what other type of work that they publish, you know, why do you wanna be in there? Then, you know, doing research in terms of there are certain publications who want you to, to send like let's say eight to 10 images and not 50. Like you have to know what their submission guidelines are as well. Don't just start stuffing emails with, you know, zipped files of a hundred images or, you know, like just be your own best editor. Like I think photographers have a really hard time being their own best editor. So that's important too. only send your strongest work, which sounds like that would be so easy to do, but it's really not. It's not. And what you love is not what somebody else might love. Yeah. You know, I always suggest like asking a friend, like a photographer friend to, you know, ask your photographer friend to look at your submissions before you send it in and see what they think. And where you might've had 25 narrow it down to 10, like 10 that really like deliver that gut punch every time. Yeah. So, so basically what you're telling us is don't throw all the spaghetti at the wall and see what's right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's a perfect um, <laughs> metaphor. Yeah. So being more uh, concise. So how, how do we like find publications? Like if I wanted to submit my work, how would I go about finding a publication um, to submit my work to? I mean, what do you, like, how do you sell yourself or what do you call like describe like who you are as a photographer are you a fashion photographer a portrait photographer are you a storyteller you know like you'd have to like are you a destination wedding photographer no so you know it's sort of important for us to set that title of what type of work you do because if you're a destination wedding photographer you, you know you're not sending your work uh to a magazine about farming <laughs> or maybe if it was a beautiful farm destination but you know what I mean <laughs> probably not <laughs> I'm not gonna send food shots over to uh <laughs> right in gown right is, right it's not gonna work <laughs> but so you have to do research or get online and google or you know because there are also blogs that you can submit to and even though people always say print is dead there are very there's still a lot of print magazines out there but then like rainfinder there are magazines that were print like rainfinder and then they became online publications or digital magazines so there's that as well yeah and there are a lot of that a lot of them out there right growing, right so while we don't see as much print there is a tremendous amount of digital you know, print magazines that move to digital and just digital magazines that have cropped up in the last 10 years, right? So, okay, so we, the first thing we need to do is we really need to figure out like who we are as a photographer. And some of us might be, we might wear multiple hats. I know me personally, like I love shooting editorial fashion photography. Um, I love shooting weddings. I love telling intimate stories. Um, there, there are a lot of like, within the portrait genre, there are a lot of hats that I like to wear. So I could send to multiples, but multiple magazines or submit for multiple things, but knowing who you are as a photographer, who you are as an artist, sounds like it's like step number, that's step number one is knowing right. who you are. 
right? So you figure out who you are and then you start looking for publications that will work and then follow their guidelines. But what about the the dreaded like rejection? I mean, we all get rejected at one point or another, right? Um, it's just inevitable. Um, and I just think, again, it sounds cliched, but if you get rejected, just like, you know, pick yourself up and dust yourself up and just get back out there. Because the places that I've been rejected by in the past, like years later, or even, you know, a few months later, I'll turn around and say, oh, that wasn't the right fit for me. You have to be like, put it, you know, turn it around to say, well, they weren't a good fit for me versus them saying you're not a good fit for us. I just think, you know, even superstores like had their rejections back in the early days. So you just, well, it's inevitable, but move past it quickly. Yeah. I think what I would do, oh, sorry. Um, what I would do at Ranch Finder is I would get images submitted for a photo of the day. And so people would send some specific images and then I would look at it. And if I didn't like them for like the particular theme of that week or for whatever it was, I would go to their Instagram or their website and look for something different. So I might have been rejecting this specific photo, but then I would say, how about that's not going to work this time, but how about this photo? So, you know, I tried to like get them in somehow because I liked the work, just that specific photo wasn't a good fit at the time. Um, I don't know that other editors would do that, but going to say I don't know that other editors are as brilliant as, as <laughs> um, I don't know that we can expect other editors to do that but I do think it's really important to note that it perhaps it's you know again it might not be the right fit for that month and oftentimes you're not going to get feedback from editors either you're just going to get a yes or a no but that's not a yes or a no to your character or to you or even to it might just be that one photograph. And so I think it's very important as I've been going through this process of I'm going to start submitting, understanding that none of this is personal. It doesn't, again, it doesn't, a, an acceptance or an, a rejection, neither one of them define me um, or my art. They just happen to be at that time. It is what it is, right? It doesn't define me. It's an action. It's not a noun. It is not it's not me. And I think we get so attached to our work and creatives are a little bit fragile in, in terms of their work. Right. And so the idea of that potential rejection is it's a little bit frightening, but I think we need to demystify that process, which you're helping us do right now. Thank right. you. And well, yeah, they can't get hung up on that. I mean, years ago, I was told when I was in college that by a professor that I was a terrible writer and should pursue something else. And I didn't listen to him. And then I was told early on by two editors, like when I was in my 20s, like, this isn't the work for you. You should do something else. And OK, fast forward, I've written two books that were published by Random House, like an imprint at Random House. And I've been an editor in chief of a magazine for over 12 years, you know, and I I've written dozens and dozens of dozens of articles that were published. So, OK, I didn't listen to those people. And so, you know, and they're where are they now? I think they're waiting tables or something. You know, I don't know, but I just nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, just you can't let the naysayers get to you is what my point is. Um, yeah. And maybe don't just, you know, again, you have to look at the guidelines for each magazine or blog that is asking for work. But if you just submit one, you know, you're not giving them enough options because if they it doesn't fit their aesthetic, then that they only have one to go by maybe send five again you have to look at what the submission guidelines are they might be asking for eight to ten but if you only send one you're just limiting yourself too much yeah so one of the questions that i think is important to ask and i think it's also important to talk about because i think a lot of people um don't think of it this way um some people might say well my business is doing great like being submitted is just a vanity thing. Why would I even bother submitting to magazines? And um, I think had I not been asked to shoot a cover or covers or inside editorials, that this is something I would have gotten around to. Um, why would you tell photographers that it's important to, to actually submit their work to publications 
um, and try and be published. I have my ideas on it, but I want to hear what yours are. Right. I mean, it's a good way to promote your work, right? Like at the AIBP conference, we were both at in November with at Sean Black Studio. Uh, I met a, photo a boudoir photographer and I was telling her that she should submit her work and send me some images. And she said, why would I ever do that? I don't need to be published. I have my little setup. I have my clients in my local town and I'm happy with that. And then she started thinking about it more and more. And then she submitted some work that I published that I really liked. And she said, wow, you know, I'm so glad I did that because it was very gratifying to see my work in a magazine and to like have my name be out there more than beyond what I'm just doing to promote it. So there's that promotional aspect and it just feels good to be published. Um, and it's something you can show your clients, you know, or put it on your wall or on your website, things like that. Yeah, I think one, it's like flexing your muscles, right? It's like flexing that uh, that vulnerability muscle by by submitting, right? So you're setting yourself up for someone maybe not accepting your work and then learning to be okay with that. I think that's a really important part of it. But I also think, like you said, when when that young lady was like, why would I ever be submitted? I was kind of like, whoa, why wouldn't you exactly. to be published? Like. Right every bridal fair that I went to for like four years in a row, because I shot for a specific magazine every year, um, all of the magazines that were being handed out at the bridal fair had my photo on the cover. And I was over at a booth over there. So when everybody walked up and they had their little magazine in their hand, I was like, oh, I shot that cover, hmm. the inside editorial. And yeah. like last year's, you know, and of course I had the magazines in my studio. So when clients would come in for consultations, they would be there. I obviously had the covers large up and printed within my studio so that my clients knew like, these are great ways to, um, not that being published defines who you are as an artist or, but it gives you a set, it gives it, it, it gives you a sense of authority with your clients. Your clients are like, wow, they're a published artist. And while it might not be that big of a thing to you, it lends a tremendous amount of credibility and authority, I think, as an artist to, to have your work in a gallery, um, in a publication, in these places. It adds a legitimacy to what it is you're doing as an artist. And even if it doesn't mean that much to you, it means a lot to the world at large and to the clients that we're serving. And so I think there are a couple of really important reasons to do it. Um, and I encourage every single one of you, obviously, because we are having you guys submit photos today. Um, I think it's very important to, do, to enter competitions and, and, to, and to submit to magazines and online publications. Um, it does, it, it it's going to flex you in a whole lot of ways and it's going to push you in a whole lot of ways. Okay. So the conversation I really want to get into with you is art, but I know if I get into that conversation with you, we're going to be here forever. <laughs> you and I can talk about fall. Yeah. We can talk about color palettes and we could talk about artists forever. Um, and that's the conversation I really want to have, but for everybody else, we're going to have the conversation where I'm going to ask the tough question. Um, one of the things we're trying to do is we're really trying to demystify the whole, you know, everyone just shows up perfectly. And you've had this illustrious career. I mean, you've done so many amazing things. And I think people, I know when I met you, I was like, oh my God, I want to be her. Like immediately I was just like, wow, like a little like fangirl, not a little, a lot of fangirling a lot of fangirling and a whole lot of like, wow, I could never be her or do that. And like, she's amazing. Um, and then, you know, going through the process of getting to know you, I was like, well, I think if I flex those, those skills and I learned those things and I put in the time and the work that she put in, I could do that too. Maybe, um, I could try that's for darn sure. Um, but I want to hear about a time where, Maybe you fell down and you skinned your knees and you learned something from it or a time where you maybe had a colossal failure, um, but you got back up and you kept going because so much of being successful in the endeavors that we choose to, 
be artistic is about resiliency, right? About not letting the the failures become who we are, but but learning from them. So do you have anything like that that you could share with us where where you had a struggle and and you either learned something really great from it or you came out the other side of it much better from it? I mean, I don't know if this qualifies um, because this was like way, way, way back, like when I was in my early, uh, like teens, 20s, um, because I was like, I'm not a photographer now, but I started out like doing photography and actually like processing my own film in my dad's basement. And that's what got me into photography. Um, And I remember I was taking a class at Cornell where I went to school and um, I had this big deadline of like a big project, a photography project that was due. And of course I waited to the last minute, but then when I was processing it, this is back when like people were doing their own black and white processing um, in a, in a, you know, a little dark room. Um, There was a pinhole camera in the developing canister that I did not know about. So all my film was ruined and then, but I still had to do a project because it was due the next day. And I remember this is so crazy, but my dad and I scrambled, like he was also a Cornell, he was an, um, a Cornell alumni and he came up, I think, or alumnus. And he came up in his car, which I think at the time was a Mercedes. And we just did this like crazy photo project photographing his car like on campus because that was not my original plan um but I couldn't just cry and say to the professor there was a hole in the canister I had to scramble to like come up with an idea immediately and then turn in the project and it did pretty well but my point is that you know this is going to happen on jobs and you know where an art director might not like your final vision or you know a client doesn't like the portraits that you took and you know instead of just feeling sad for yourself or sorry for yourself you do just have to sort of pivot and and work it out and so even though that's a very basic example I think that that you know sort of epitomizes like what what I'm talking about overall yeah and pivoting that's a very important word (laughs) that's such an incredibly (laughs) that's that's the thing that we do when we when we hit those mistakes or we hit those things where we fail, we have to be as creatives, we have to, as creative entrepreneurs especially, we have to be willing to pivot and pivot quickly. So we need to be agile when we're running our businesses and work when we're creating for clients as well. We have to be okay with like, okay, that didn't work. Next, like quickly, just we're just going to shift it a little bit this way and we're going to try it a little differently or come up with another project. Um, and again, not let it not let whatever happened that that made you pivot define you, but let it take you in the direction where you are actually going to grow and go further. So, yeah, I think no, I think that was a great example of. Oof. Not well, as- I actually thought of one more because when I was starting out at Photo District News, they had me do all the party pages back then because there were so many like photo gallery openings and parties. And I met, uh, I was photographing Jay Mizell, who is another name. If people don't know who that is, you should look up his work. Um, and I was taking a photo of him at a party and he yelled at me for like pull, pushing down on the shutter too hard or something like that. And Instead of like saying, well, I don't know what I'm doing, which was the truth at the time, uh, to just say, oh, thanks for your input. And then just turn around and do something else or just, you know, like because he was a legend and he still is. And so, again, you're going to come up against those people, too, who too, who know more than you do. You just have to sort of be graceful and thank them and not get defensive. Like that's a big part of it, not getting defensive. Yeah, I think that's a part, that's a part of like being vulnerable, right? And knowing right. we always all have places where we can improve and we can grow. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Jacqueline, I want to thank you so much for being <laughs> this. Um, if our viewers want to, um, do you do portfolio reviews? Is yes, that- I love doing them like all the time. Okay. So how can our viewers get in touch with you? Because I know a lot of us want Oh, sure. Portfolios reviewed. I might be sending you over a portfolio for review. Um, because I would 
I would actually really, really love that feedback. How can we get a hold of you for that? So my email, I'm putting it here for you to see, but um, in the chat, but it's jtobinma at gmail.com. So J-T-O-B-I-N-M-A at gmail.com. Okay. Guys, I'm telling you, this woman is a legend within the industry. She is such a leader of the industry, maverick even. Um, <laughs> If you want to, to speak with Jacqueline um, and have a portfolio review, you can reach out to her. Um, I am so grateful. Again, thank you so much for working with me on this and for being the inspiration for this journey. Um, I appreciate you being a part of it and sharing your experiences and your story with us um, and also helping me get this off the ground. Like it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for you. And I don't think I would have been inspired to do this had it not been for you. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you so very much for being the incredible human and artist that you are. And just know that I'm still over here still after all these conversations, I'm still over here, like a little nervous and fangirling because, <laughs> because thank, I'm you. <laughs> thank you. You're too kind. Thank you, Denise. And thanks for like bringing me on. It's been a pleasure. Um, and I know, like you really care and that you're very authentic and genuine and that's what people love about you too. Um, so this has been great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, everybody. It's time to start submitting. We've talked about the importance of it. So I want you guys to get out there, get that work done, get it submitted. And I am really looking forward to seeing what you guys create. Thank you so much for going on this journey with me. I appreciate every single one of you. I wish you all the very best. And I hope that you choose to live, like go on the journey, be big, be bright, be beautiful, take up all the space you want to take up and know that it's okay to like skin your knees and fall down. It's all okay. We're just on this beautiful journey of life together. Let's go make art. Let's be curious. Let's be playful. Let's have fun. And then let's submit. Let's do it. Jacqueline, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much. Everybody else, I will see you soon. And Jacqueline, I'll be talking to you soon. Thank you, love. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.